Hello, this is Craig. This is day 21 of my 30 day video challenge. In day 20, I asked the question, what is your generous contribution? If you've watched the past few videos, you're aware that I am reading a book called The Practice, Shipping Creative Work by Seth Godin. Yesterday, I began asking the question, what is your generous contribution? In the book, Seth is talking about generosity. And he's having a discussion around creative people and talking about their work in terms of generosity. We pick up from day 20 asking the question, what is your generous contribution? In the chapter, Seth says, selling can feel selfish. We want to avoid hustling people. And so it's easy to hold back in fear of manipulating someone. Today, as I was thinking about this topic after reading this chapter, I got to think about this idea of manipulation. What is manipulation? Why does manipulation feel so bad and so wrong? I wanted to get to the root of this because it relates directly, it relates to being a creator. It is at the core of a fear that many creators face when they go about putting their work out into the world. Seth is talking about creative work in the terms of generosity. As I read this part of the book, about selling and how it is a real struggle for creators because we don't want to feel selfish. We don't want to manipulate people or even appear to be manipulating people. But after reading this sentence, Seth goes on in his book and he shares a test to determine if you're manipulating someone. So if you have, if you have any doubts, if you're questioning Am I manipulating someone through my work? He provides a great test. If the people you are interacting with discover what you already know, will they be glad that they did what you asked them to? This is the litmus test of manipulation. This is how you can use a question to help you determine if you're manipulating someone. My guess, though, is if you're creator and you're asking this question, you're not manipulating them. So today I was thinking through this idea of manipulation. I wanted to understand it better so I could possibly move on from it because I too struggle with a fear of manipulating people, a fear of selling to them. I really wanted to understand what it is and what it's not so that I could really just kind of remove this thought or working so that I could work to remove this fear from my life. Or as any one person might do, I went to Google and started searching. So the first thing that I came up with was definitions of manipulation. There are many different contexts which the word manipulation could be used in. And so I want to go through some of those to help us better understand the word and what's behind it. Bear with me as we go through some of those and we'll really highlight the few that really apply to this context of being a creator. I found a definition and it's from the Collins Dictionary. That's collinsdictionary.com. And I'll put these sources down in the description. The Collins Dictionary defined manipulation this way. And this was, this was for the US definition. So the British or other definitions might vary slightly. We're going to start with the U.S. version. So manipulation, there, there's looks like three, three main definitions, and we'll go through those quickly here. So number one is to work, operate, or treat with, or treat as with the hand or hands, plural, and then handle or use, especially with skill. So that's definition one. The second definition is to manage or control artfully or by shrewd use of influence, often in an unfair or fraudulent way. The example given here is to manipulate an election by bribing the voters. The third definition has two parts, part A and B. We'll start with A. A says to falsify figures, accounts, etc. for one's own purposes or profit or to rig. Part B says to cause prices of stock, etc., to fall or rise by wash sales, matched orders, etc. I also wanted to get another source or another definition, and so I found one at vocabulary.com. 
And it says that manipulation is the skillful handling, controlling, or using of something or someone, whether it's the sculpture you made in art class or how you convinced your friend to do your homework. Both are considered manipulation. All right, so we really, I think, have a good foundational knowledge what manipulation means. While not all of these definitions apply to our specific use case, I think they lay the groundwork to help us better understand why this fear exists when it comes to creators or creative work. So let's let's dive into that fear. As a creator, many times I have struggled with what feels like sales. It feels like selling to someone. I've always hated it when people sell to me. I recognize that their job may be to sell a product or service to a customer, me being a customer, but the way they go about it can change everything. Anytime that I've been in a position, a job or a role where my employer was asking me to do some type of sales work, it would feel kind of icky. It felt slimy. And there are only a handful of times where that was not the case. And so one of those times is working in an Apple retail store. Uh, you're probably familiar with Apple, but you may not be you may not have been in an Apple retail store. And so I, I want to kind of shed some light on that. Uh, so in an Apple retail store, the retail stores were never created as a way to sell products. And that may seem completely backwards to you, knowing that it's a retail store. The really important thing to understand here about the Apple retail stores is they were created to educate and inform the customer about Apple products. When they were created, the Apple stores were created in a time where there was no iPhone, there was no iPad, and there was no Apple Watch. The main product that existed was the Apple computer. Later, they added more products like the iPod, but largely the main product was Apple computers. And so when these stores were created, they were put in place to educate, to inform, to demonstrate the things that Apple computers could do. It was a way to create relationships with customers. The primary purpose was never to sell things. These stores served as a way to build relationships with people that may or may not know about Apple computers. It was all about providing a solution. It was not about selling something to them because our ultimate goal was to serve the customer. And so this idea of manipulation really resonates with me. And it is really kind of the foundation of maybe my fear to sell to people because I never want to be dishonest. I never want to use my influence in an unfair or fraudulent way, as this definition says. I, I never want to take advantage of people in order for my personal gain. Understanding this definition, understanding the root of the word, and what it means really helps me to understand why I fear this so much, why I avoid this so much. And I think it will greatly help me as a creator to better serve my audience. You know, when Seth brings up this, you know, this topic of generosity in terms of shipping creative work, this really resonated with me. You know, we'll go back to his quote again, because I think it's really relevant. He says, selling can feel selfish. We want to avoid hustling people, and so it's easy to hold back in fear of manipulating someone. A lot of my hesitation as a creator is that I don't want to feel selfish. I don't want to feel like I'm hustling someone. I want to feel like I'm serving someone. And so that's a key shift in my perspective on not not only how I sell, but how I serve. And so I started thinking about this idea. The difference is between most places that I've worked where sales was part of the process was they were trying to truly sell to someone. They were trying to hit number targets. And sure, maybe they were trying to serve the customer, but the primary role were the sales. Where at Apple Retail, the primary role and purpose was to serve. And that's a key difference because I always want to serve my audience or my potential audience. 
and the products or services that I may create in order to meet the needs of my audience are there to serve them. I'm not there to sell them to them. I'm not trying to manipulate them or influence them in an unfair or fraudulent way. I exist and I create, I create my creative works to serve people. 